Welcome back to the Ange Endeavor. Ange here. I hope you're all having a fantastic day so far. Today's vlog is going to be about my Beatles record collection. I wanted to share it with you and I'm going to also share a little bit about uh, my history with the Beatles and all of that. So without further ado, let's begin. This photograph I wanted to show you um, is one I got off of eBay and it's a newer print but it's supposedly taken from the original negative so I don't know how true that is it did have a number like there were numbered a certain amount of these uh, printed and I didn't pay that much I think I paid like 25 bucks for it and I'd never seen this particular image of them, and I really, really liked it. And when I got it, it was like really glossy. It looked pretty legit, you know, but then you never know what you're going to get on eBay. In any case, I really love the photograph, and I found this old uh, frame, and I decided to just uh, put it in there, and I uh, went and bought that mat, and it all went together pretty nice. And this is a really cool one. It looks like they, they uh, put the, you know, the photographs uh, onto a canvas thing. I'm not sure how they did that. It's not an old one, but it's, it's really certainly really cool. So one of the reasons I wanted to do this vlog is anybody who, who's known me my whole life or a good portion of it knows what a big Beatles fan I am. And the Beatles came into my sphere, my world, when I was about 12 years old, um, just prior to John Lennon passing away um, or, or being killed because he didn't pass away like a normal person does. So, but um, I had a couple of friends that lived in my neighborhood and uh, one of them was a big Beatles fan, and she actually uh, taught me about sort of who they were and some of the songs. And then around the time John Lennon released his Starting Over um, album, it was actually the single release. I remember she bought that record, and she put it on the record player, and... I remember she had a Panasonic turntable and I thought that was like, wow, you know, Panasonic. And, and so I remember, you know, starting over and I loved the song and everything. So shortly after that, um, when I was home in the evening and back then I lived in San Pedro, California. Um, so I was home and the TV was on in the living room and it was, a uh, I remember a dial TV because we didn't have a remote control. So it was a dial TV. The news came on and they said that John Lennon had died. And in my young mind, I couldn't comprehend what that meant. But I remember my heart sinking. And I knew and, and I believe for myself that was a big turning point in my life. Because what followed was this whole world opened up for me, you know, the world of the Beatles. And so, so I became totally obsessed with the Beatles. They were everything. And what I learned from the Beatles, you know, as all of us do, we learn from our experiences and things that we hear or see on television or we hear music or whatever. Um, you know, they, they open up our, our eyes and our minds to different things, to a different experiences. So the Beatles for me, you know, I mean, they really fit me as, as a person. Uh, back then, I didn't understand any of that. Of course, I just loved the music and, and I loved kind of, I, as I went along, I sort of learned more about what they were about. You know, you, you start off with the mop tops, Beatles, you know, 
and you have wonderful catchy melodies with you know wonderful lyrics you know they're just kind of simple and um and it's just the whole thing about them you know and then you get into the mid 60s where they started delving into more serious subjects like Eleanor Rigby and they started bringing in different instrumentation um you know orchestral instrumentation and then and then they start experimenting with different kinds of um sounds in the music and you know so they really just tr were so transformative um, for the generation of the 60s. Now, there's a lot of fantastic other bands and, and, and folk singers in the 60s that were transformative as well. Um, you know, and there were, there were, you know, the Rolling Stones and all of those. And, you know, some people are Stones people, some people are Beatles people. And I was always Beatles. And I had a best friend, she was always Stones, you know. And we never fought about it, but you know, it's like we know we knew who we liked, and um, and some people really like both equally. So, um, but the Beatles really have just like gone beyond, and even today, there's a whole Beatles culture out there, and it's not um, something that I don't think will go away because they changed music, um, they changed pop culture. And uh, the death of John Lennon was a marker of that, too, because even after they broke up, they were still writing great songs and putting great music out during the 70s. And, and then Paul McCartney went on in the 80s and, and George Harrison and so forth. And so, and I was mostly John. I resonated so much with him, but I was also George, too. And I loved Paul, too. And, of course, you know, who doesn't love Ringo? I mean, the band wouldn't be the same without Ringo. And, and I got to appreciate Ringo more later on in life as I understood their personalities and everything. And, um, you know, the Beatles wouldn't have been the same without him. I mean, it just, you know. And he sang, you know, so many great songs on, on the Beatles albums that you know, with a little help from my friends and all of those ones that are so signature to him. Anyway, so, um, so that said, the Beatles, um, for me, taught me how to go inward more because I was already kind of a little bit introspective back then and a little bit, um, you know, I was kind of a little bit of a loner, you know, a little bit introverted. And they helped me to expand my way of thinking, you know. So that 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 worked really well. Across the Universe was one of the uh, songs that, you know, I mean, it's just, it's a very expansive song. And so, you know, it, it impacted me in a way that is everything positive. So let's fast forward to my record collection now. This record collection, um, I started collecting it in the 90s and um, I had had a record collection in California. I was collecting then and then like when I was about 14, 15, I started dabbling in uh, religion like Christianity and the pastor of the church said, you know, that having the Beatles records and all of that was um, a sin and dancing was a sin and all of that kind of stuff. So I got rid of my Beatles collection, you know, reluctantly, I got rid of the collection and I gave it to some girl um, who liked the Beatles in high school and um, who I've lost touch with. But um, I regret, um, there were two pieces I wish I still had. One of them was a a, a notebook binder it was a white one and it had a picture of them on the front of it and it was from the 60s it was original and so it's you know worth some money and then but it's gone and then I had a uh, four track um, 45 with the with them with the umbrella from the Beatles 65 album and um, that my godmother had given me and you know of course it wasn't worth as much then as it is now and now it's like oh man I I just regret, you know, those being gone. So 
So fast forward to the 90s, and um, my my half-brother uh, bought me, knowing he knew that I had like the Beatles, and he bought me a really nice rubber sole. Uh, it was the original Capitol label, you know, the black with the rainbow, and it was a stereo version, but the, well, I'll show it to you, you know, the, the cover was really crisp and the record was in near mint condition. And that started my wanting to collect again. So without further ado, I will show you my collection. And the cool thing too about collecting later in life is um, before I go on, is that I realized it's like, hey, I'm older now. I have a job so I can buy a nicer Beatle records. All right, so here we go. This album here was on VJ, and I have it in plastic, but I'll show this to you. Um, let's see, yeah, so this one, um, the VJ album, or VJ, uh, was who the Beatles signed to uh, when they first uh, were doing, you know, signing on with American labels. VJ took them, no one else would take them. Eventually they signed on to Capitol. So you can get a few early presses of uh, the Beatles on VJ. And let's see here. So I'm going to show you this one. I'm going to take it out of the, the wrapping here. And I may do this for each one of them, but I don't know because I hate taking them in and out. Um, so We've got uh, songs, pictures, and stories of the fabulous Beatles. So this one is, it's a gatefold, as you can see. Pretty cool, huh? And there's the back of it. And what I do with these, with my records now, um, this is the original dust jacket here that came with it as you can see but I don't put the record in there I've learned how to preserve my records so I started uh, using you know buying plain white sleeves and um, I'll show you here so look at that beautiful record look at that nice shine on there pretty cool huh you know and I've never played it but there's not a scratch or anything on this. So I can't remember how much I paid for it. I don't remember how much I paid for each of these because I kind of bought them through time um, since the 90s. But anyways, that is that is what I do. I, I well, with the, with the ones that are in pristine condition, you know, white paper sleeve and, you know, and keep these separate. Okay, so my next one I'm going to share with you. This one here, this one is by United Artist. This is a, um, a unique one. It is uh, George Martin with the Beatles, and basically it's just all instrumentals. And, um, and so I really thought that was nice. I, I kind of liked that cover and uh, I like to try and, and collect some of the odd ones that are hard to find. And that one just has a plastic sleeve. It didn't have a proper inner sleeve. So maybe one day if I find that, um, pretty cool. And then here is another VJ record. Whoops. And this one... I don't know if this is a counterfeit or not. I have to go and look. I don't think it's a counterfeit. Um, it didn't have the original uh, sleeve in it. So I just put it in this paper sleeve. But, you know, it's a VJ, as you can tell. And it's got a pretty nice, you know, it doesn't have any scratches. It's got pretty nice shine to it. And these can get really expensive. If you get, like, if they have some, so this is the bracketed VJ. If you get the ones in the oval, um, they're really, they're worth a lot of money. They have ones called an ad back. So the back of this, you'll see, this is what the typical back looks like. But there is one called an ad back, 
So, which means they put all of the uh, record ads on the back. They're really, really rare. I mean, you could pay, you know, a couple thousand dollars for that. So, um, anyways, so that's all I know and remember about that. This one here is not Meet the Beatles, but this is Beatlemania. So what this one is, it's a Canadian version of what Meet the Beatles was. And I loved it because it was kind of a different cover, you know. Uh, it doesn't have the original dust jacket, you know, or the sleeve. So I just kind of kept it all together. Um, but I love this one. So that one is similar to Meet the Beatles. So there's the Meet the Beatles. Um, so you can kind of see how they differ a little bit. This Meet the Beatles, I believe, is in shrink wrap. So this one is in, let's see, is this the shrink wrap? No, this one is not the shrink wrap. I'll show you the shrink wrap. I have, um, I have this one, and then I believe this one is the shrink wrap. So I'll show you once again. Um, this is a mono pressing. I have two of these, one with and one without a shrink wrap. Uh, I mean, without the the dust cover. That's not that's not it. Where is the shrink wrap one? Maybe that is the shrink wrap. Let me see. One of these has shrink wrap. Maybe it doesn't. Oh yeah, well, either way. Okay, it does not have the shrink wrap, but what it does have, once again, the really cool sleeves that go inside. And here are here is the record itself. So look at this cover here. What a beautiful cover that is. Look at the edges, how clean they are. So I have two of these. Excellent shape, it's like practically brand new. And um, I'll show you the, the record. I won't show them both to you, but once again, another paper sleeve. And look at that beautiful shine. It's in excellent condition. And I've never played it either. I won't play these. I'll only play like ones that I, they're kind of scratched up and stuff, but yeah, I won't play these. So that is that for that. And then I hope these are all coming up clear on here. Here is one that is in shrink wrap. There it is. This one is in shrink wrap. This one is a stereo version and it's got the green writing. So it came out, um, I'm not sure exactly, I'll have to look that up, but it's got the original shrink wrap. And you can see the price tag, $4.70 something cents there. Isn't that cool? Can't see what is under in there, $4.79 maybe? I don't know, but there we go. Original shrink wrap. So, um, our next one here, this one also is in shrink wrap. This is the, uh, yes, the Something New album here. There's the dust jacket on the back. And I'm not gonna take it, take all of these out because you know then I have to put them all back in. Um, but it's pretty much the same thing. It's in pristine condition. I love the cover of Something New. Here I have <clears throat> Beatles' second album. This one is um, a stereo pressing. And it's in okay shape. It's in decent shape. It's not my most favorite. Um, let's see. I, I wonder if it has the dust jacket in the back. I don't know why I didn't put it. Does it? No, I don't have the original dust jacket. So it's not like a fully put together piece. So anyways, there's that one. Here is um, United Artists, of course. Um, we've all seen this one, A Hard Day's Night. And this copy is an okay copy. It doesn't have everything, it doesn't, it's not perfect. Um, so I'd like to improve upon that one. 
And this one is the early Beatles put out by Capitol Records. It doesn't have a dust jacket either, um, the original one. But, um, and eventually I'd like to get a mono version of this. But what this one was, um, they took the songs off of the VJ, the early Beatles VJ album, uh, because that's the original album that the, these songs went on to. And so um, they, they released this a little bit later um, so that people could have access to the capital version of those songs. This is the Beatles' sixth album. I have a couple of these. This one is a stereo, and it comes with the sleeve. Look at that nice green. Here is a nice mono version, and this mo mono version also comes with the sleeve. Okay, so this one, a beautiful Beatles 65 also with the gorgeous uh, sleeve. It's a nice color. Um, I really like this one. Beautiful edges. A really nice help. It doesn't come with the, the original inner sleeve, but it's a pretty nice help album. Uh, nice clean corners. Here it is. This is the rubber sole that uh, my half-brother gave to me that started me re recollecting. Beautiful inner sleeve. Uh, really, really just a gorgeous record. I mean, gorgeous. So I decided to get the mono version of that. That one was a stereo. I got a really nice mono version. And I think, let me see. I think this, is, this has, this one has, yes, it does. This one I found in the original shrink wrap. Look at that. I will never get rid of these. I mean, this is a near, near mint condition. Yeah, I had to pull that one out for you because it's just too cool not to pull out. And then, you know, there's the record in there. I want to show the record of this. Just because it's just like, you know, there's there's cool Beatle records, you know, that a lot of these, most of these are typical, but you know, to find them in extraordinarily amazing condition like this, you know, it's getting harder to find. So I'm gonna set that aside. And then here we got, I don't mean to bore you with all this, but I guess if you're sticking with me this long, it must not be too boring. Um, here we have, this is, this is a revolver. This re revolver is okay. Um, the record's in decent shape. It doesn't have the original inner sleeve. So this one I'd like to replace, but what it does have is it has some of the shrink wrap on there, but it's very delicate and kind of torn up. Like, as you can see in the back there, it's just kind of torn up a little bit, but it's a shrink wrap. And... Then this one is my one of my special ones. I love this revolver because this is a German press. And look at that super cool sleeve. And this one is in, I have to show you the um, what the label looks like. It's a by Odeon. And I haven't gotten deeply into collecting um, European Beatles yet, but I want to. Um, I want to start collecting Parlophone and Odeon. And Odeon, I believe, did both uh, the French and German. But look at that cool label. Isn't that amazing? And, and look at that shine. This is a really nice, uh, excellent condition Magical Mystery Tour. It didn't have the original sleeve in it, but... Um, you know, it's pretty cool. It's got a very clean, clean edges. Very nice. Here I got a mono Sergeant Peppers, which you've all seen before. And it's in pretty decent shape. Um, I have a, both a mono and a stereo. And um, they're, they're not perfect. 
There are starters. Eventually I'd like to get some really pristine ones that with no rough edges or anything like that. Um, I have a really nice white album. Um, this isn't the embossed one, but it's got all of the original pictures and um, poster in it. And the records are in excellent condition. So, but I would love to get an embossed one because those are like the early, early ones. And then I also have, I have Abbey Road. And this one is, you know, like I said, these are like my le least pristine ones. And um, eventually I'd like to get, you know, the, a nicer copy. You know, this is a kind of a rough let it be. I'll show you some of the 45s I have. And, and that's another thing I would need to do is build up my 45 collection. Oh, yeah, so here, this one is a nice Parlophone. Isn't that a nice cover? So it's Parlophone. I got it because of the cover. Isn't that cool? So and then here's another one. This one is Odeon. I believe it's a French one. And then these are a couple of Parlophones. I have two of these. One of them is really in rough shape. This one's kind of, you know, in rough shape. But here's a nicer version of that same one. So, so here's a swan one. These are American. Uh, swan came out uh, with some of the earlier songs. That I have an Atco. I actually have two Atcos. And um, so those are those are sought after too. But they're not terribly expensive. The the um, value hasn't stayed up on those because I think there's a lot of them around. There is one more album that I forgot to show you. It's not really a real record, but it's a mock cover of the Beatles Yesterday and Today album. You know the one that they did the Butcher album for? And then they changed it out with them sitting on the trunk? Well, they came up with, uh, or someone came up with these mock ones of the trunk one, but with the blue background and um, yellow writing and yellow and white writing, which I think is actually a really attractive cover. It's too bad they didn't use this cover, you know, so they actually have a back and it's, a, it's sealed, but there's no record inside of it. I bought it because I just thought it was super cool looking. Um, and that's the only reason. So it's all about the cover, right? I mean, it's all about the cover. Anyways, thank you so much for muddling through my Beatles record collection with me. I, I thoroughly appreciate it. And I guess um, that's it for me right now. And I hope you have a fantastic, lovely day. And we will be seeing you around again. Bye.